Today, we're gonna to look at simplifying rational exponents or in other words, fraction exponents. But before we do that, let's review just our exponent rules. Um, I've got here the names in the table, the property and an example. So starting with product of powers, if you have two powers, meaning two bases with exponents and you're multiplying, you actually add those exponents together. Looking at our example, x cubed times x to the fourth, would equal x to the seventh. If I have x cubed, x times x times x, and then I have x to the fourth, one, two, three, four, multiplying all together would be x to the seventh. The next one, power to a power. If you have a base with an exponent that's raised to another exponent, then you are going to multiply those two exponents together. For example, x squared cubed, I would have x squared times x squared times x squared, I could then use that product of powers, that first one together and add the two plus the two plus the two and it equals x to the six or simply just multiply those two exponents together. The third exponent rule that we have is power of a product. So if you have two things inside getting that have an exponent with it, they each get that exponent. I think of this one with like that distributive property, each thing inside the parentheses are getting that exponent. Um, the example we have x to the fourth, a y and z cubed all being squared. So as I give the two exponent to x to the fourth, using that power of powers, the previous exponent rule, we would multiply four times two and get eight. The y has an understood one. Each of those are separate, x, y, and z. So y to the first one, it gets squared, is y squared, obviously. And then y cubed, when I square that, x, uh, z to the sixth. Next, what about negative exponents? So if you have questions on this one, I would love showing students how this property works. When you have a negative exponent, it is going to switch down into the denominator and become positive or vice versa. If we had had one over, I'm gonna change the letter to B to the negative M in the denominator, it would move up to the numerator and become positive. Um, obviously I wouldn't need that one in the denominator there. Um, but if you do have a negative exponent in the denominator, it moves up to the numerator. Um, for example, x to the negative three, it just shifts down and becomes x cubed, but positive down the denominator. Um, and if you had other things, they would remain in the numerator. And we'll look at some examples here in a moment of that exponent rule. The last exponent rule listed here is when you have anything to the zero power is equal to one. So I love finding my exponents that are equal to zero. They just kind of disappear out there in the world and become one. Um, for example, X to the zero equals one. Um, again, I can model that one for you and show you where and why that rule exists. So let's put that into practice. Again, we're still just reviewing those basic exponent rules. I haven't even got to the new stuff yet. Number one, a cubed times a squared, very similar to the example that we talked about in the table. I would have a times a times a times a times a to represent all those exponents there. I can see that I would just add those exponents. Three plus two equals a to the fifth final answer. Number two, we have x to the fourth. I can show this expanded out as four x's times a single x. I would add those exponents as well, four plus one. We have a to the fifth there, or sorry, x to the fifth there on number two as well. Number three, we have c squared to the fourth power. So I'm gonna explain, expand this out just a little bit to show you. You can see how we could just do um, two times four there, c to the eighth or I can see how it's been expanded out. I could add those up, two plus two plus two plus two. I still c to the eighth final answer. Number four, z to the third to the fifth power, power to a power here, you multiply three times five, gives us z to the 15th. Number five, we have three to the negative fifth times three to the fourth. I'm gonna do the product of powers property first. So they are multiplying. So I can just add these exponents. Negative five plus four gives me a negative one. Now, using the negative exponent rule, that negative exponent means that whole power needs to go down into the denominator and become positive. One over three to the first or just one over three. Final answer there. Number six, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's do negative one um, plus negative one 
doing the product of powers there, adding those exponents together. That gives me 6 to the negative 2. Again, move that negative exponent down into the denominator. I get 1 over 6 squared or 1 over um, 36 because I could do 6 times 6 is 36. Number 7, we have our power raised to an exponent power to power rule. Let's do that one. 3 with the negative 1 times 2 gives me 3 to the negative 2. 2 or negative squared, that negative exponent needs to move down into the, the denominator and become positive. So 1 over 3 squared, or we could evaluate it. 3 squared is 9. 1 over 9, number 7. And number 8, we have that power to power there as well, multiplying. I can see 2 raised to the negative 3 times 0, of course, is 2 to the 0. Finally, using that 0 exponent rule, anything in the 0 power is equal to 1, plain old 1. There's a little bit of a review. May have been a minute since you've studied exponents. I know it's very heavy in eighth grade math. May have not seen any exponents since then. So moving into our lesson for today, to understand those rational, which is going to be fraction exponents, let's look at what happens when the properties of integer exponents are applied in this example, starting with 25 raised to the 1 half. So you can see that exponent one half, that's what we're going to be looking at today. So what do we already know? I know that I could probably rewrite 25 as five squared. Do you agree? So let's change 25 to five squared, still raised to the one half. Okay. Now I do know if I have a power to a power there, we multiply those. And I showed that written out two times one half equals what? One. So I have five to the first. Now, kind of another place left field. I know that five is equal to the square root of 25. Okay, so talking back through this, we started with 25 raised to the one half. I rewrote the 25 as five squared, still raised to the one half, using that power to power um, exponent rule, multiplying those together. Two times one half is one. And therefore, I also know five is equivalent to 25, the square root of 25. Okay, so pulling that together, let's look at those far ends there. 25 raised to the one half, therefore should be equal to the square root of 25. Right? Okay, so let's look at the, the definition, the rule down here. A rational or fraction exponent can be rewritten as a radical, square root, cube root, nth root. Um, so let's see here. We have, if I have a raised to the m over n, some kind of fraction, then it will be equivalent to the nth root of a to the m, where n represents the index and a to the m is the radicand. So that little number in the check mark box part is called the index. I'm going to label that here. That's called the index. And then you can put a to the m. The m can be either inside the radical or outside. It doesn't matter how you want to do that. I'll show you what's going on. Um, stars, heart shoes, clovers, and blue moons. The denominator is the index. Whatever you need to memorize in here, so I always say the denominator of the fraction is the index going in the little check mark part of my, my square root radical there. So let's practice. Write the expression in radical form. So we're going to take those fraction exponents, make them into radicals. Number one, x to the two thirds. The three is the denominator. That's going into the check mark part, making this a cube root of x squared. Done. Number two, x to the one half. The two, the denominator, goes into the check mark part. This is going to be a square root of x to the first. Or I could write this more simply. We, If we don't have an index number in our radical, we assume it's a square root. And I don't really need that one exponent either. Those are both understood. So if you want to write just a plain old square root of x, all of those would be inferred. Number three, x to the one seventh. The seven is my index, x to the first. Again, you wouldn't have to write the one there. You could write it more simply as just the seventh root of x. Number four, keep your eyes peeled. What has that three-fourths exponent? Who owns that? Only y. 
only the y owns that three-fourths exponent. So we're leaving x alone. He's hanging out and chilling. The y to the three-fourths, the four is the denominator, becomes my index. We're talking about a fourth root of y cubed. Done. Okay? So be mindful of who owns your exponent. If they wanted everything, they would have put it in parentheses like this. Okay? And then you would have a fourth root of x, y. I should probably put a cube like that. Okay, to show everything. Um, so number one for the next section, write the expression with exponential form. Let's go backwards. Now we already talked about the understood square root here and understood one exponent. So let's go backwards. I would have x raised to the one half. The denominator was the index. So bring it on over, make it one half. Number two, a cube root of x. Again, there's an understood one there on the x. So to write this in exponential form, x to the one third. The three is the denominator. Number three, fifth root of x to the fourth, x to the four fifths. Number four, the fourth root of x cubed would be equivalent to x to the three fourths. Okay. Now let's use those rules to simplify expression. So look at number one. We have one over three x to the one half. Who has that exponent of one half? Just the x. So let's say one is going to stay the way it is. We've got three and let's change that fraction exponent to radical form, the square root of x. I'm going to show that and then obviously we can write it more simply with just that um, understood square root of x. Number two, the quantity of 3x raised to the negative one fourth. Let's take care of the negative issue first. So if I have a negative, it needs to go down in the denominator. We still have all of 3x raised to positive one fourth now that we shifted it into the denominator. And now let's change that fraction exponent into a radical one over the fourth root of 3x. Number three, we've got one over the quantity of 2x squared plus 7 raised to the 1 half. I see I can already go and change this fraction exponent into a square root of all of that 2x squared plus 7. Number four, one over 2x to the negative 4 thirds. Notice x is the one that owns that exponent there. So let's shift that negative exponent. It should come up into the denominator, x to the positive 4 thirds. The one was there. Now I don't need to show that one was our numerator because one times x to the four thirds is x to the four thirds, but the two is still remaining in the denom denominator. Now let's change that fraction exponent into the radical, a cube root of x to the fourth over two. Last section here, and we are gonna leave this in an exponential form. Let's look at number one, the quantity of 27 x to the 12th, y cubed, raised to the 1 third. So I underlined we do have three pieces here, 27 to the 1 third, x to the 12th, raised to the 1 third, y cubed, raised to the 1 third. So let's simplify. Now that I've shown each of those are getting that 1 third exponent, if there already was an exponent, that power to power rule, multiplying, let me go ahead and rewrite the 27 to the one third would be the cube root of 27. I did say we were going to leave this in an exponential form, but I do know the cube root of 27. It is three. So all of that is going to come out nice and pretty. It's 27 to the one third is just three. Let's go on to X raised um, to the 12th power, then raised to the one third gets multiplied there. 12 times one third is four. Same with the Y cubed raised to the one third get to multiply those three times one third is one. So it looks like our final answer is going to be three X to the fourth Y. Number two, we've got eight X to the negative ninth, Y to the negative 18th, all raised to the five thirds. Again, three things in those parentheses, each getting that exponent. We have eight to the five thirds, X to the negative ninth raised to the five thirds y to the negative 18th raised to the 5 thirds. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 8 raised to the 5 thirds as the cube root of 8 to the 5th. 
x to the negative ninth raised to the five thirds. So if you're not confident with your fraction operations or multiplying here, let's look at the calculator on a new document, calculator page. We can do negative nine times, I really like to use the fraction boxes on the Inspire with control, divide. It'll give you that numerator and denominator boxes there. So I know exactly that I'm typing in what I want it to do and it's negative 15. Doing the same thing with the y, we had negative 18 times, I'm gonna do control divide to give me that numerator and denominator boxes there, 5 thirds equal to negative 30. Showing you one more thing on the calculator. So maybe I don't know the cube root of eight to the fifth. Let's do control and the caret button here, that little up arrow that we use a lot for exponents. Notice in blue it had nth root of x, that's going to allow me to type in any number there for that index. So I can type in a cube root of 8, using that caret again to give me that exponent of the fifth. I can type it all in there. I'm not guessing. And enter is 32. So we have 32, x to the negative 15, y to the negative 30. Let's take care of those negative exponents. 32 is going to stay in our numerator because right now everything is in the numerator. Let's bring that x to the 15th down in the denominator. It's now positive exponent and y to the 30th. Also now move to the denominator with a positive exponent. Number three, we have three things in our parentheses there. Nine is getting raised to the three halves. x to the negative 14th is getting raised to the three halves and y to the negative 16th also raised to the three halves. So first we have a square root of nine cubed, multiplying negative 14 times three over two, negative 21. So x to the negative 21st, y to the negative 16 times three over two, negative 24. Okay, what was the square root of 9 cubed? Now, 9 cubed is not um, 27. That's 9 times 3, so be careful there. Let's do, I'm going to do the plain square root, which is under our control x squared button, and we had 9 raised to the third gives us back 27. Now, what was 9 cubed? 9 cubed is 729, so we're talking the square root of 729, not to confuse anybody was 27. Again, we had these negative exponents that we're going to need to shift into our denominator. So 27 over x to the 21st, y to the 24th. Number four, 32 is raised to the negative 2 fifths, x to the 10th raised to the negative 2 fifths, y to the negative 20 raised to the negative 2 fifths. 32 has that negative 2 fifths. I'm going to shift it into our denominator and then I'll evaluate the radical part. Let's go ahead and multiply our power to powers here. So we have 10 times negative 2 fifths. 5 goes into 10 2 times. So I know this is going to be x to the negative fourth, the 2 times the negative 2 there. We've got negative 20 times negative 2 fifths. Again, 5 goes into negative 20 four times. So negative four times negative two would give us y to the positive eight. All right, so let's fix up those negatives. We're leaving y to the eighth is positive in the numerator. 32 was negative and coming down into the denominator and becoming positive two fifths and x is coming down the denominator to become a positive four exponent there. So we have y to the eighth over what is the fifth root of 32 squared? Control, that caret button will allow me to type in a fifth root of 32 squared, four. So all of that turned out to just be four, and then we still had the x to the fourth. Three pieces there. We had the, the num numerical coefficient, the x values and the y values um, there. So make sure you're following those along. Notice we had lots of negative exponents. We had to simplify a lot, so take that nice and slow. So there are some examples there of those rational exponents 
fraction exponents, we reviewed those exponent rules that maybe we haven't seen in a while um, with numbers one through eight at the very beginning. Um, those fraction exponents, the denominator of that fractional exponent becomes the index of our radical or vice versa. So lots of practice you'll have on Delta Math. In that first practice section on page two, we left it in a radical form. And the, then the latter, the last section, we left it in an exponential form. So um, guys, let me know if you have questions. We're going to continue this in our next lesson. I'll see you in class. Have a great day.